Hi, this is Amy Choi with Business Week Small Biz. I'm here with Paul Offman, Psychologist and Managing Director of Business Consultants RHR International. Thank you for joining us, Paul. Thank you for inviting me. So we're here today to talk about entrepreneurship and failure. Tell me about how today's entrepreneurs' appetite for risk may be changing. I think entrepreneurs live in the same world as everybody else. It's a world now that feels much more risky and uncertain than it did a short time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, entrepreneurs, by their very nature, are people who take risks, who look for opportunity where other people may not have found that. And so today, while it's a time to be cautious and uncertain and maybe want to pull back from risk, uh, that really is at odds with the fundamental driver for entrepreneurs to seek them out and to go after them. Are there actually any risks involved in having never failed or in having never been tested? I think there are, and I think that there are many risks uh, that uh, in, in never having failed. If all you've known has been success, and depending on when you've entered your entrepreneurial life, when in the various business cycles that's happened, you may have only known things that get bigger and better and faster and more profitable over time. And the problem is that everything does eventually change. Uh, if you've never had the experience of something going south, a change in the economic climate, a bubble that bursts, then you really don't have the internal sense about how things can abruptly go wrong. And therefore, uh, in terms of your point of view, your judgment, and your scanning of the environment, you don't naturally look for the potential downsides because you don't really know them to be there. So say you're in the middle of it. You're an entrepreneur. Your business is failing. Your finances are falling apart. You know, your big idea has bombed. What do you do to ensure that the failure is a learning experience and not, and not a dead end? Sure. Well, you know, it's human nature to think that when things are going well, it's because of what you do. And when things go badly, it's because of external events. Mm -hmm. And that's true some of the time, maybe even a lot of the time, but it's not true all the time. And so the advice that I would offer uh, to somebody who has gone through a downturn, an entrepreneur who has failed, is to really take that as an opportunity to really look at what might they have done differently. And that includes such things about their business plans and the way that they read the market but it also has to do with them as a leader and about the various traits that they have, the way that they have perhaps created vulnerability that they didn't foresee, the decisions they made about how they use their time and who they hire, uh, a whole range of business judgment and leadership uh, issues that if you choose well, go well, and if you don't choose well, sometimes go badly, so that the failure really becomes an opportunity to revisit. Uh, what was done and how you handle yourself and what might you learn from it and take into the future. So is there an upside to failure? I think there is. You know, there are some, you know, certainly everybody would say that given the choice to fail or not fail, most people, maybe everyone would say that they would choose not to fail. But the fact that it is happening and may be happening outside of your control uh, is really an opportunity if you have the point of view and the inclination to learn from it. And I could give you an example that one of the ways that we prevent disease is by giving people inoculations. You get immunized. And the way that that works is that you're made stronger by giving you some exposure to something that can hurt you. And while we're not talking about disease in our present conversation, that model really does offer something of lasting value, that if you do get exposed to the possibility of challenge, of threat, and of danger, and can become stronger for it, then when you face more serious challenges in the future, then you have a better likelihood of prevailing. Well, that's certainly something to think about. We are here with Paul Offman, Managing Director of RHR International, and I'm Amy Choi with Business Week Small Biz. Thank you.